Yes. <laughs> you uh, you trace over all the mangas like uh, Gene Simmons' son. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, Gene Simmons. It's right? the other. It's the other uh, staircase. Gene Simmons, right? Yeah, he that guy. He's in a band. He has a really shitty son who sucks. Really, a rock star has a terrible child. So I am fucking shocked. Like, I'm an expert. I'm shocked. No, uh, behind the, you. Behind the you. son is like, oh, I'm an expert. Um, uh, drawer. Draw, I like draw, to, yeah, no, I'm the I best like at drawing. I like to do drawings. I love it. And he released a manga, and guess what? He just copied pages of Bleach. Like, oh, entire, God! Like, entire chapters. And then, like, people started noticing because, hey, I'm not sure if you know Gene Simmons' son, but Bleach is pretty popular. Pick something no one knows, idiot! Yeah, exactly. So, he, he got sued. And then, no, you gotta go and, over there. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just want to, like, talk about how... You want to talk about your scan-laden manga? Shove this gun. We'll just shove the gun into it. This is your movie, kids. Gluttony, I presume. Mm hmm. Wait, are you the asshole who's been riding on my fridge? I got no fucking clue what you're talking about. What am I talking Someone's quite clearly written guilt on my fucking fridge! I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. All I can see is your dumbass drawing. No, not that one. I'm talking next to the fucking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What? Can we get this over with so I can go eat some chips? <laughs> I just need to review that one comic. What comic? This one? This is my own comic. I haven't touched that one in years though. No, you retard the one by Nick Simmons. What? But, but that's a real comic, not a web comic. That that's not my field. Yeah, but the only place you can read it is on the internet. So that basically makes it a web comic. But you can't say that you don't want to now, can you? Man, you really are gluttony. Subtitles are okay. Hey, they didn't Fine. Fine, let's do it. I did, though. Yeah, you know, you press B. Now check C. What a great fucking start to this. The biggest issue with this comic is not as much the comic itself, but all the stuff that's censored around the comic behind the pencil, so to speak. Now I've been doing my very hardest not to go ad humanem, which is a term very similar to don't hate the player, hate the game. I review the comics, and try to keep my reviews at that, but I feel that to understand just what exactly this buttfucking of a comic is, we need to address the comic's author. Now, if you don't know who Kiss is, you should probably stop the movie, because the rest of this won't make any sense. Also, fuck you for not knowing who fucking Kiss is. Incarnate is a comic book series published by Radical Comics and created, written, and penciled by Nick Simmons, son of Kiss member Gene Simmons. It is infamously known for its plagiarism from several manga series, most notably Bleach and Helsing. Nick Simmons, who was later found out as an art thief, denied the accusation claims made by many outraged artists and fans. You heard that right. This shit was actually published. I don't own a copy because most of this shit was pulled back due to the claims of plagiarism. And boy did Nick get his ass handed to him. An entire Facebook group was made for the sole purpose of bringing Nick Simmons down. The group even went as far as taking lawful actions against the entire issue, and the creator of the manga Bleach, Tide Kubo, literally got spammed with messages about the plagiarism, to which Tide Kubo 
like a total boss, simply replied to with, I'm more interested in the fact that Gene Simmons' son is a mangaka than whether he's plagiarizing me or not. So, no one was sued in the end, but this may still be THE comic next to Sonic 2 that has made the most negative ripples in the big sea that is the internet. Mostly because Nick Simmons did the same thing every tracer does when confronted with cold hard evidence. Panicked and thought people were stupid. Now, I'm just gonna read up some of Nick Simmons' statements when confronted with the plagiarism. Listen everyone, you're all digging your own graves posting on this forum. Facebook is looking into suspending this page and issuing any warnings for slander against me. I can't make this any clearer. I did not steal other people's work. I may have appropriated some styles, but I did not steal. My work is full of homages to everyone in my medium, not theft. You guys are just a bunch of mean-spirited mouth breathers. Except all my fans on here who have rightfully supported me. I will ask Facebook not to press any charges against you if you give me a sincere apology here in this thread. Please do so. Facebook keeps all your IP addresses and info so they will suspend your account if I do not receive proper apologies. The moment he set up his supporters against his haters, what name ran through your mind? Okay. Now, looking at some of these photo comparisons, I can see why a few people are up in arms. I can tell you right now, these are all purely coincidences. I never even heard of Bleach. Who would name a comic after laundry detergent? When I channel my energy when drawing my book, sometimes I can pull stuff in that I've never seen before. It's like I'm possessed when I start thinking and drawing. Perhaps I just got on the same wavelength that all artists share. My dad just called and said I have a real case against all this slander. If Facebook doesn't give in to my demand soon, there's going to be hell to pay. Now, I have to damage control on another side, more people being misled. Now, I have to deal with this and my book's deadline. I'm not sure how I can think and draw under all this pressure. Now, to be fair, I'm pretty sure this was just a troll who got a hold of Nick Simmons' Twitter account. Cause this is just too stupid. But it's still pretty funny. Like most artists, I am inspired by work I admire. There are certain similarities between some of my work and the work of others. This was simply meant as an homage to artists I respect and I definitely want to apologize to any manga fans or fellow manga artists who feel I went too far. My inspirations reflect the fact that certain fundamental imagery is common to all manga. This is the nature of the medium. I am a big fan of Bleach, as well as other manga titles, and I am certainly sorry if anyone was offended or upset by what they perceive to be the similarity between my work and the work of artists that I admire and who inspire me. Yet, before he stated that he didn't even know what a manga was and never heard of Bleach. Okay, one last one and then I swear we'll get back to the comic. I have no idea how people are saying my comic looks like that bleach magma. My book is in color and the other is not. My book reads left to right, the other reads right to left. Besides some vague similarities, they are nothing alike. I put my heart and soul into my book, great story and awesome characters, yet people are trying to pull me down. And no, I didn't trace or copy other people's work. Most of these photos are starting to look like photoshop manipulations to make me look bad. You can't trust everything you see on the internet. Great story, awesome characters, keep that in mind as well as everything else as we take a good look at Incarnate. Incarnate centers around the relevance who are a bunch of people who are unable to die and who wish to band together for some unexplainable reason. This is however immediately start when a secret organization kidnaps two relevants, the protagonist Mutt and the sidekick Connor, to be bodyguards for a rich girl. If this plot sounds stupid, well. Mutt, looking like a teenager and surprisingly also looking a lot like Nick Simmons, is then tasked with also protecting the girl, Sybil, in school. We don't get to see any of that, however, as the people who before wanted an alliance with the two now goes all guns blazing to kill Mud and Connor. 
Frankly, this comic just sounds like what a guy from the West would describe any generic manga as. The story is lackluster and drops a rather good concept with how little it explains about the universe. Where does the relevant come from? Is this our world? Why have we never seen a relevant? Why can the relevant transform? Who is that representation of themselves that shows up when they die? It might have been answered if the comic wasn't stopped. But I really, really, really doubt it. Every goddamn cliche is being used in this story. So much so that you can predict basically everything that is going to happen. And the only time you guess wrong is when you know that that was what Nick was going for, but the execution and the writing more than helped kneecapping the entire thing. Here's the thing you probably didn't know. The art isn't the only thing that Nick Simmons stole. Nope. Nick has several times been caught quoting from other comics, and the stuff he didn't steal is... Angsty at best. I mean, just listen to this. Your impermanence disgusts me as I pass you by, as a shark bitten corpse disgusts an idle seaman on his way. That was so deep, man. Doesn't make a lick of sense, but man, that was deep. To give the comic some props is that it is surprisingly a lot like a battle manga. Now, Opposed to say, fairy tale that is done with a wide cast of lovable characters and interesting combat and all executed with great expertise, Incarnate is a lot like Bleach. Bleach to me is a battle manga for the sake of having battles, and after the saving Rukia arc, every little thing feels forced and unnatural. Same thing with Incarnate. There will be power-ups and the random fights just pulled out of the ass and for a split second, it felt like the kind of stupid silliness you'll find from Bleach. It's like a martial arts movie where the hero has to fight an entire school to get directions to that one store that sells those funny little keychains. My last complaint here is that the main thing about this comic is the relevance being immortal, and they don't seem to be aware of any real ways to kill or be killed, which, surprisingly enough, manages to give some actual threat when they are being attacked by people who actually can kill them. This wouldn't be a bad thing if A, everyone and their mother says they'll kill each other even if they're relevant, and B, it makes the comic suffer from a thing I like to call the Helsing Conundrum. Retract your feet, ladies and gentlemen, cause Ryza is about to cop storm some toes. The manga and anime Helsing are to me very, very, very boring, and every little thing in the comic seems trivial. Why? Cause there's never really any threat. Alucard gets shot to pieces, chopped up, then paled, and much much more, and never seems any weaker than before. You never worry that Alucard may die or ponder if he'll be able to kill his opponent. Alucard is simply too awesome for the series good, a lot like Mutt is in an incarnate. You never worry whether he'll die or not, cause the main fucking thing is that he can't die. Nor do you care, because Mutt is a shitty, shitty character. It's stolen. Fine, fine. Elaborate. We already know that you won't find a single point here, because this comic is cheating and stealing something fierce, and with no attempts to even hide it. Everything from Bleach and Helsing to Deadman Wonderland and just some random drawings found on DeviantArt are being ripped right the fuck off, matching the original lines down to a T. Deny it all you want, Nick, but the only way this could seem more sketchy is if you held Nick Simmons at gunpoint and commanded him to draw for you. However, contrary to Jackie Diaz, Nick has also made his own backgrounds, or rather someone else did, but at least these are creative, inspired and well made, if not sometimes a little lackluster. So looking at the characters again, cause you couldn't care less about no backgrounds, what do they look like when they aren't traced? The art meter says <laughs> NOTHING! Nick is only a little above average when it comes to drawing, and you can easily tell that he has no groundworks of how drawing works. It's like copying the moves of a kung fu master without understanding them. 
The proportions are all over the place, usually with torsos so long that it looks hilarious, or arms long enough to make them look like gorillas. Also, there are obvious signs where stuff has been traced while other stuff has been left up to Nick to make up himself. Like here with this dude yelling. Innocently enough until you notice the teeth of paper thin. Sometimes the proof isn't what's there, but what isn't there. In this case, talent. Many of the people's designs are also stolen from elsewhere, once more from Bleach and DeviantArt, and the designs that aren't stolen are just so... childish. It's all spikes and skulls and shit. It's almost like he's familiar with, with some kind of... Some, some kind of rock metal band or something. Speaking of childish shit, a thing that I noticed is something I myself did a lot when I first learned to draw back in my teenage years. Nick has an odd fascination, as other immature artists have as well, which is to show super close up of eyes or completely black silhouettes with shining red eyes. Only the other people I knew back in my teenage years who did this, opposed to me, were, you know, good at it. Really, what is there to say? Nick is a semi-okay artist who steals and traces at every turn, and hasn't had a single creative visual idea throughout the entirety of the creation of Incarnate. Even Christian Weston Chandler didn't simply trace the original lines of other drawings, but instead did his best to make his drawing look like the original work. So yeah, Christian Weston Chandler put more work into his art than this guy. And if that sounds harsh, well, good. Once more, the immaturity of Nick Simmons shines through as a writer. If you've ever wondered what it means to be an immature writer, look up Incarnate and give it a read and you'll understand it perfectly. All of the characters are thin and one-dimensional, yet changes at the tip of a hat to suit the situation. A Jackie Diaz character, in other words. First of all, we got Mutt. Mutt is angsty and violent and just not a very likable character. You don't understand his drive, nor his choices or behavior, and it's easy to tell that it's not because he is mysterious, but rather there hasn't been put more thought into him other than he is SUPPOSED to be a murdering badass. Yet he's just a murdering psychopath. Level character, oh hi! Once more, Incarnate proves to be the basic of the basic in having a moody and dark protagonist and then have one who's more happy and good lucky as a sidekick. That sidekick is Connor. If you ask me to describe Connor other than this, I'd ask you kindly to eat a bag of dicks, cause this is the extent of Connor's character. He's another homicidal lunatic who just happens to enjoy his situation more than Mutt does. At least he's not the worst Connor I ever seen. FUCK YOU! And yet again, the typical trio is true to formula, as the last member of the protagonists is a girl by the name of Orihi, I mean Sybil. As opposed to Connor and Mutt, Orihi, I mean Sybil, is incredibly well written and serves as a unique and interesting viewpoint on the entire thing, raising questions such as what is immortality and what's the value of the human soul. <laughs> I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, no really, she's, she, she's just there for boobs. Orihi, <clears throat> Sybil is only there to serve as a love interest, and her personality too changes at the tip of her hat, getting incredibly moody and emotional over the slightest thing. Like, Mart spends the entirety of the three volumes talking shit to Uri, God damn it, Sybil, about how much he can't stand her guts and wanna escape her capture, which Uri, I mean Sybil, brushes off nonchalantly. But then suddenly, while trying to escape Uri, he <clears throat> Sybil clutches by killing himself, even though he can't do that. This suddenly makes Inu Sybil cry. You big meanie! Why don't you want to be my lifelong slave? I thought you loved me! The rest of the cast are really fucking boring, with the exception of fucking Kenpachi here. But the only reason for that is because, well, it's fucking Kenpachi. Like, so much like Kenpachi that Nick could probably write a decent fanfic about him. But I really, really, really doubt it. As I mentioned before, the characters are very plain and shallow. It's a little sad that I have already given a deep and thorough analysis of the main characters, even though it seems like I've just glanced over them. But 
that's just how shallow they are. To really emphasize just how shallow these characters are, I wasn't able to give a description of any other of the characters. There is simply nothing to work with. I've done these reviews for a better part of a year now, and this is the first time that the characters have been so shitty that I got literally nothing to talk about. The premise is a free. Let's be honest here, the idea of beings existing in this world who can't die is an interesting idea. And that is pretty much the only thing earning the premise any points. It is horribly managed and quickly loses all hope of interest the reader could hope to have with how absolutely horrible the comic is written. The art is a one. As always, no points for cheating, but even if this stuff wasn't stolen, it would still not be very good. The stuff that isn't traced clearly shows signs of anatomy not being understood the slightest and the poses and imagery is lacking in creativity. On the plus side, the colors and shading are okay. It kind of stands as a shining example that even if your art is detailed, it doesn't mean that it's good. The characters land on a 2, a very generous 2. The only reason why it's not a 1 is because you are able to distinguish one character from another. That's it. These are some of the most boring and uninteresting characters I've ever laid eyes upon. All in all, we land on a 2. Great connections and a lot of money got this shit off the ground, but it's lazy, an amateur writer and obvious plagiarism has more than sunk this comic. Even What Dreams May Come was somewhat funny to read. This was just a chore with pretty pictures. Pretty stolen pictures. I think that's about all the comics out there with obvious traced art. I don't know. If you find any more, be sure to suggest them to the show on riser at mail.com so we can stop them. I'll see you guys in the next webcom relief. Take care.